Oh, shit. Hello, I am the Red Monk, and today we are going to talk about the struggles of daily life. You know, sleep paralysis is like this disorder. When you go to sleep, you get into a half asleep state, and Satan comes up and molests you. It's a real trouble. So, we have a little bit from one of the sufferers. And we're going to read what he has to say. <clears throat> he says, I can't remember the first time I have had episodes for as long as I can remember, starting when I was possibly 11 or 12 years old. I would still suffer from it maybe once or twice a month, no matter how often it happens, it never gets easier or less freaky. The worst one I can remember is waking up while I was still living with my parents and my great-grandmother was sitting at the end of my bed. She was dead maybe 10 years at this point. I tried to move. Nothing. Scream. Nothing. Now, I was starting to panic. She just sat there and, and I thought, it's okay, this will pass. When suddenly, she was sitting on my chest screaming in my face. Remember that old lady in the diner from the movie Legion, who turns out starts climbing on the roof? Yeah, that. Wow, what troubles that bloke must have felt. Now, before I get into this, I know there are some conditions where these sort of small things really bother people. Dude, but this dude was totally just freaking whining. He's like, oh, feel bad for me, oh, poor little me. It's like, who gives a shit? You know, if you have all of your limbs attached, you shouldn't be complaining. <laughs> it's this whole victim thing. It's like, oh, please tell me about your childhood. It's like, I don't give a shit. And it's like so easy to be all like, oh, I have this mental disorder. You know, especially, you know, everyone is a little bit crazy, you know, to some extent. And it's only a disorder if it's like really extreme. So, you know, some of us aren't that extreme, and they, like, brag about it, make it, like, it's extreme, and try to, like, pull this victim thing and make you feel bad for them. It's like, I don't give a shit, man. It's like, tell me your life story, please. Now, of course, I hate on you. I'm not saying mental disorders are fake, right? I mean, there are definitely some real mental disorders out there. But like I said, there's a really high line where it affects you on the day-to-day. -day. But I swear, a lot of these times, well, I'm sure, maybe the guy who even wrote that actually has something. But, I mean, if you can go through life, don't come at me with this whole victim thing. I mean, it's not illegal to, like, sit, complain, but it's just really socially annoying. So I have another uh, whiner here, another Reddit post. And we're going to take our time to read this one because it's especially enjoyable. It's a... Uh, I've already given up, and I'm not even 18. <laughs> He's posting the r slash depression, just out in the wind, anyone who'd read it. But, uh, all I do is sit around all day until it's time to go to sleep again. Every day is exactly the same. Sometimes, I go outside because I need to, but mostly, I'm at home. I hate my life, and I hate myself. This guy's a teenager. You know, I'm one myself, man. Hormones. I don't want to do anything. Sometimes I actually want to do things, but I'm always too tired and give up after 10 minutes. All I do is browse Reddit, watch YouTube, and listen to music. In the evening, I masturbate so I can fall asleep. Usually, I'm not even horny. <laughs> I can't keep up with life. I'm very lonely. Usually, no one invites me out. And if someone happens to invite me out somewhere, I always end up not going. I mean... I get, I never get invited out, and I never go out. If you get invited out, you gotta take it. That's, you can't just, like, wake up and have everything, man. It's just how life is. Uh, I'm a lazy piece of shit. Oh, wow. I complain about everything, but do nothing to change it. It's like, then, why are you trying to, like, throw this on us, man? Just, if you don't like it, it must be not that bad if you can't make the changes, man. That's how it all starts. God damn. Uh... Uh, I dread the simplest social interactions. My anxiety is so bad I can't call people on the phone. 
nothing drives me forward in life. Okay, I'll give you that. When I was younger, man, it's like so awkward to talk on the phone. But the strategy is, is you have to pronunciate. You have to pronunciate, and then talking on the phone is easy. But uh, nothing drives me forward in life. I have no goals, no dreams, because I'm convinced my life will end up shit anyway. Better to have low expectations so you don't get get disappointed. Oh, you gotta get disappointed. I am a teenager. I have all the possibilities in the world, but I'm fucking it up because of depression. I don't do well in school. I used to be one of the best students. I fucked it up. I can't even do homework or study. I am a disappointment. I mean, just do something about it, man. I mean, trying and failing is more entertaining than doing nothing. I can't study, do homework, be productive. I can't talk to people. I can't shower. You. I can't sleep. I can't even brush my fucking teeth. I've given up on my hobbies. I wish I could die, but at the same time, I'm terrified of death. There's no way out. Now, uh, our boy here with the depressies is just high on hormones. Yeah, it's just there's peaks and there's lows, man. And I I don't know that person. That's just a post I read. But I think it's a really good example of you know this whole exaggeration thing, this whole victim thing. And a lot of people do it. And I just don't give a shit. I mean, yes, I know there's real people out there who don't have legs that like are depressed. But I mean, if you're 17, man, just like it's more entertaining to do stuff and fail than to do nothing. But uh, that's a complex issue. I'm just throwing in my two cents. And the point of this video is to talk about this whole, like, victim thing. This whole, like, look at me and my suffering. And I have some guesses as why people think this way. Of why they, you know, constantly go on about their childhood or whatever. And I think there's uh, three major things, I guess. I guess they're all sort of related. But... I think the first thing is that it's kind of bloating their ego a bit. They're like, oh, look at me and my struggles. You know, kind of brings it inward towards them, you know. And we all love ourselves. So it's just uh, maybe to jerk themselves off a bit. Uh, the second one is it makes them sound like they're like at a disadvantage. Right, this is just my guess. But it makes it so like it's kind of an excuse. It's like, oh, I'm bad at my homework because I have depression. It's like it's an excuse. You know, it's like, I don't have any friends because of my depression, which I'd say that's ever anyone's fault. You know what I mean? But you don't have to pretend like you have this huge disadvantage because, you know, you're perfect otherwise. You know, if it wasn't for this one thing, you'd be out swimming with the fishes, you know, with Jesus. But I guess an excuse. Uh, and the final thing is, I think, you know, earlier, you know, everyone is, I say, a disorder is a line, but you know, you can be a little bit uh, anxious, you can have a little bit of anxiety, you can have a little bit of sleep paralysis, you can have a little bit of depression, but just a little bit. And as long as it's not like a huge curve that affects your daily life, it's not that whole big of a deal. I mean, yeah, you can have mild depression. A lot of people have mild depression. That is not uncommon. But I think they see the little bounce, they see the little uh, depression hump. And they're like, wow, that's depression. And they sort of placebo it and make it grow. And, you know, mountain comes from a molehill, you know? It's, we all are a little bit weird. I mean, there's no lying. It, the reason I, I want to talk about this is that, I mean, this is not going to change anything. I mean, it might make a few people aware of it, which, you know, these are for entertainment. You know, it's just for a nice little bit. But, it's kind of awkward, you know what I mean? I mean, they come at you, they're like, oh, my childhood had this, my uh, anxiety does this, and you're just like, okay, good for you, <laughs> I feel bad for you and all. It just gets so uncomfortable, there's like no good way to respond to that. It's not, it's like still back far enough. It's like that is too many steps, that is way too close to the comfort zone. It's just, you know, you're back a bit, normal conversation, just like shooting the breeze. And that's just like, heavy and it's over you it's just so uncomfortable but 
But, you know, I mean, besides, I guess people being, like, placebo and growing just a little bump is bad. And it is awkward in conversation. But, I mean, it's not illegal. You know, you're not going to kill anyone thinking you're depressed or... I mean, you might convince yourself you're depressed, which is not good. But it just sort of makes that validation, makes you feel better about yourself. It lowers your chi flow. It lowers your chi flow, which is not good. But, I mean... There's worse things you can do. There's a lot worse ways you could think. So uh, nobody cares about your sleep paralysis. We're all focused on our own. <laughs> yeah, Mind you, mental disorders are real and are serious for a lot of people. But you know, we all have different amounts of stuff in our personality. And it's just part of being alive. And if everyone had a disorder, it would no longer be a disorder. You know, it's okay to not sleep well or feel bad. It's just part of being alive. It doesn't have to be this huge, grandiose thing. Jesus Christ. But, but, I'll tell you one thing. None of this shit is as bad as having short teeth. Sucks, man. Makes everything I say sound like I'm mumbling. I can't even rule my R's. I can't even do it. I can't even rule my R's. It sucks, man.